I spent a year drinking most of the time when I went out to pick up girls. Now, most of my life, I didn't really drink, right? From the ages 21 until, I don't know, 29, 30, I barely drank. I would drink occasionally, like once every couple months, right? But I wasn't relying on alcohol to approach women. But more recently, uh, I had a period where I was extremely stressed, extremely anxious, and I started rationalizing that I needed to drink. And drinking, how did it affect my game? Did it make it better or did it make it worse? It has one big advantage. It reduces feelings of stress and anxiety for like 30 minutes. The problem is after about 30 minutes, uh, you feel the need to have another drink to keep your mood up because it's going down, right? After you drink, your mood slowly goes down. It doesn't like keep going up, it goes down. And then the next drink, it's like it gives you a little boost, but your mood's also going down from the previous drink. It's like the hangover is starting already, right? That's basically what happens. So you're fighting against the negative emotions that are coming up more and more by drinking more. And then eventually, it's not even possible. Eventually, if you're at six, seven, eight drinks, you're like you're binge drinking, uh, you're not even in a good mood anymore. And I know this because I've gotten in fields where I was noticeably drunk, where I had five or six drinks. I've gotten in fields and I've watched them. Maybe I'll put in a clip. Love. Apparently. <laughs> Quite the name. Where'd you get that? At a sex store? Fantasy love? Is she auditioning for Wonder Woman? Is that what's going on? And those were my worst infields. I was less charismatic. My voice went up a fucking octave. I was uh, less masculine. Just everything was worse. I was more choppy. I didn't take the lead as much. I was more hesitant, funny enough. And I also wasted more time, right? I would just be in an interaction that clearly wasn't going anywhere and just not do anything, <laughs> not move on to the next one, for example. That's what happens when you drink. So it has one advantage. Drinking has one advantage. The first 30 minutes, it can reduce that initial anxiety. But that anxiety would have worked itself out if you just went out and talked to a few people. That also would have done the same. And if you did it that way, you also would have gotten closer to a flow state. You would have gotten momentum. Your mood would start going up. You would start getting endorphins going, etc. And what alcohol does is it numbs your ability to experience any positive emotion. It numbs your ability to actually enjoy what's happening. That's what I've noticed. It doesn't just improve your mood and make you have fun. If you have one or two drinks and that's all you have for the whole night, not really a big deal. But if you're someone like me, who after you have a couple drinks, you're tempted to keep drinking, and you end up binge drinking, it is going to cause so much more harm than good. When I was not drinking, I would pull most nights a really attractive girl, take a really attractive girl home most nights that I went out, the majority, more than half. When I was drinking, it went, it went down to, out of going out seven days, one or two pulls per week which is still not horrible, right? It's, I know like a lot of people are like, oh, that's a high quality problem, but it's definitely worse. And second, you don't get any momentum. So if you go out and the first day you go out sober and you're struggling, you don't want to do it, but you do it anyway. What happens is the next day it's a lot easier. And then the next day it's even easier. You get momentum. But if you drink and you get like actually somewhat drunk, you get no momentum. The next day, well, it's harder because you're actually more stressed. Your cortisol levels are up. Your anxiety levels are up. It's actually harder. And you don't remember taking action. You didn't face that resistance because you were using alcohol. So you didn't face the resistance. You didn't overcome an obstacle. So you didn't build momentum. So it's not easier the next day. The other couple things you have to keep in mind with drinking, does it make picking up girls easier or harder, is... One, well, first of all, bigger picture, it's going to help you gain weight and make you in worse shape and hurt your self-esteem. So that's bad. And then secondly, uh, you're not going to enjoy the experience as much, even if you have success. Even if you meet a really hot girl and you end up hooking up, when you're drunk, it's not nearly as enjoyable. It's not as good. So what's even the point? You're numbing yourself to joy, to actually feel intimacy, to feel a real connection, etc. So drinking overall causes way more harm than good if you're someone that binge drinks if you're someone that can genuinely just have a drink or two and not feel tempted to have more nothing wrong with that that's perfectly fine but i'm not that guy i'm the same way even with energy drinks once i have one i have the second one i have the third one then i'm at like 600 milligrams i'm wired out of my fucking mind that's the kind of person i am so for me drinking causes far more harm than good i pulled less girls 
I had less fun, made less progress. And you don't get that experience of pride of having overcome anxiety, of having overcome resistance, that feeling that you did something that required courage or you didn't want to approach, but you did it anyway. You don't get that either. So overall, far more cons than pros to drinking. And I highly recommend that if you do drink, that's okay, but you need to be able to take action without drinking. If you can do that and drinking isn't a crutch, it's not the end of the world. But if it is a crutch, it will vastly, drastically reduce your ability to have success. And that's why I put a lot of effort into breaking that habit. Maybe I'll talk more about that in the future, but I've reduced my drinking by about 75%. So it's not like I've completely quit cold turkey. I wouldn't say that, but I've reduced my drinking by about 75%. And I've noticed less stress, less anxiety, more willpower, more general enthusiasm for life. Just like I want to take more action. I feel more motivated to do things. And in terms of game, you're just more charismatic. You're able to build momentum. And even though in the short term, it's harder for a week, for two weeks, until you're able to do 10, 20, 30 approaches, it might be harder. But once you get over that initial resistance, it's actually easier, more enjoyable, more rewarding, and you get better results. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button so that this video is shown to other people. I think in the future, I'll probably become an anti-drinking advocate. I think I'll reach a point because alcohol, even though I wasn't drinking every day, I never reached that point. I never would drink when I was alone, right? I would never drink unless I was going out and socializing. Even though I never reached that point, it still had a substantial negative impact on my life. Just doing it for somewhere between one and two years, just having that as a habit. I highly encourage anyone who's watching this to learn, to embrace the stress and the resistance that happens at first when you go out without drinking. Because in the long term, you actually experience less stress and have a lot more success. If that's the amount you drink, I would really just look into content. Actually, Alex Becker, watch this video. Alex Becker has a video. Just look up Alex Becker drinking. And that is a great explanation of um, what drinking is and why it's bad and how to quit. So watch that video by Alex Becker and watch it like 10 times. Re watch it, rewatch it, rewatch it, rewatch it. That's what I did. And then slowly, unconsciously, my desire to drink went down. So that's what I would recommend.